Hi, my name is Adrian, and I'm the author of Arrival of the Gods. We've published a number of teaser trailers, but we've never shown you what a video novel really is. This is about to change. We're going to be showing, rather than explaining, what we've had in mind all along. What you're about to witness has never been seen, no, has never been experienced by anybody outside of our team. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is the opening scene from episode 1. In retrospect, it was not difficult to understand why Pope Francis had renounced his office. Even an open-minded, modern, and progressive pope was not ready to accept truths which contradicted 2,000 years of Christian belief. 1. Hans Hans Staffel son of General Hans Staffel and grandson of General Hans Staffel, the only surviving member of the failed July 20th plot to kill Hitler, was staring at his half-finished plate of spaghetti carbonara as Earth raced by some 450 kilometers below. He sat in the far corner of the Asimov, the best canteen on the lot. Not that it meant much, but food was cooked, not printed, and this made all the difference when you spent enough time up here. The Asimov was a bleak, gray-green room where people hunched over their plates in quiet resignation, while TV screens flashed visual white noise off the walls. The ticker at the bottom of the screen indicated they were showing something about a gunship exploding on its way to the Titan. The scrubbers were making dull mechanical noises behind a wall panel. This stuff should be silent, thought Hans. It was not supposed to remind you that you were hurtling through space at one orbit every hour and 33 minutes, and that your supply of air was in such fragile hands. Hans hated the thought of being so far from the ground and not being in the pilot seat. Considering how attracted he was to terrestrial life, he had difficulty understanding how he had become a fighter pilot in the Luftwaffe first, and then an entrepreneur piloting his own lift. When he flew commercial, he still asked for the aisle seat, because it gave him the feeling he would not be trapped in case the plane called a mayday, as if aisle or window would make a difference if the plane dropped out of the sky. Hans stared at what was left of his spaghetti. There was something different about eating carbonara up here. Maybe it was the recycled water, or maybe it was the scrubbed oxygen. Hans's latest theory blamed the eggs, Eggs did not take well to artificial gravity. A news anchor on one of the screens was celebrating the winner of Big Brother Mars, Russian edition. This brought the total number of guests to six, said Gideon Rush, the anchor. A small logo in the corner indicated that this was Rush Hour with Gideon Rush. The Indian and US members would be up next. Once the 16 guests had been selected, they would fly to Mars for a nine-month stay on the Red Planet. All the major networks across the world had been hyping up the show for the last two years, and it was believed it would be the most viewed program in history. Ahead of the Olympics, the FIFA World Cup, and the British Royal Weddings, concluded Gideon with genuine pride. Hans looked up and groaned quietly as he saw Eddie walking in, 